So this is a Mr. Multi-System. And I could talk endlessly about it, but let's face it. All the retro hardware channels have already done that, haven't they? It's the second coming. Appearing in the last few years and sporting near-native performance via hardware emulation rather than software. With all the DIY enthusiast ethic of a Raspberry Pi, but a lot pricier for obvious reasons. It took me over an hour to build and quite frankly I couldn't have done it without help. Also the case fan is too loud, so I'll probably replace it. And now, because everyone has advertised it to Kingdom Come while knowing there was a limited number of stock, prices have inflated and there's a chip shortage of the DE10 Nano, leaving FPGA enthusiasts not entirely happy with the rush of the retro game community into their niche. With most Mr. Cores, it's a case of flashing an SD card, booting that up, running a series of Linux-based scripts to get things off the net, and then either manually acquiring BIOS images from your consoles and placing those files in the correct folders like a good upstanding citizen, or installing a less-than-legal script to fetch them for you. That's it. Setup complete. Do some global controller configuration and ROM dumping and you're off to the races. Unless you want to play something other than console titles. You know, like DOS games. The AO486 is a core for Mr. that currently instructs the FPGA to behave like an Intel 486DX33, according to the GitHub page. Friend of the channel, James McKenzie, says it's actually a 486SX, but with the performance of a DX33 as it doesn't have hardware emulation for the MAF coprocessor found in later legendary DX2 processors. Yet. Why yet, Lonnie? Why did you say yet? And why is there no clear answer as to what the AO486 can do? And why do you say 486 instead of 486? Well, I'm not going to dignify the last question with an answer, but as for the rest, it's because the project is in a constant state of flux with every update bringing new features and performance improvements, and occasional regressions that are swiftly patched out. It's an evolving system. The problem with the core and its concept is that much like a regular old PC, it requires a lot more setup than a console. So on top of the Mr. setup I spoke about before, it also includes creating a virtual hard drive, installing a DOS version, mounting the appropriate drives and then installing your games. What a pain. It also doesn't support Redbook Audio as of this video. So if your DOS game has a CD-ROM soundtrack and no other options, you're gonna go without music unless you have some excessive tinkering skills. And that's what it comes down to. There are two types of retro user in this world. Those who enjoy tinkering on a hardware or software level, the electricians and the programmers and the like, and those who don't have the time, inclination or manual dexterity to perform said tinkering and want a streamlined approach instead so they can just enjoy the games. Fortunately for them, even with the mister, there's an alternative solution. I've briefly talked about Mr. Forum member Sean Henderson, alias Flinsbit, in the past, because they compiled a nice list of 300 DOS games. In addition to that nice list, they managed to get that list of games working on the Mr. Well, without knowing for sure, here's why I think they did it all in the first place. They saw the Exodos collection and thought to themselves, why should we make everyone mess around with DOS installation and excessively long setup times on the Mr. for each game, when we can instead make DOS gaming as accessible as their console brethren? Not his exact words or reasoning, I'm sure, but you can go to his YouTube page linked in the description if you want lots of videos detailing his work and his reasoning, instead of my baseless speculation. After porting a mostly untested version 4 collection of Exodos to Mr. using Volyega's excellent Exodos converter, he decided to work on a second porting project, creating a highly curated selection of the best DOS games from lists on the web, and pairing them with the Total DOS Launcher, a DOS-based front-end for starting up your DOS games without using the command line. It's a good list, and as with all lists, it's entirely subjective. I feel like it's missing a few classic titles, and I'd probably add about 40 to 100 games on top of the 300 that are on there. 
but apparently there's a way to fill in those gaps with the ability to add games. So it's not a deal breaker by any means if you want to do that. Just be aware that anything you do add has no guarantee of working and you'll have to figure everything out by yourself. Unless you visit the Mr. Forums, which I recommend you do. Of course, the acquisition of the enormous zip archive is probably going to break copyright law in your country too, so be aware of that. If you're a stickler for legality and want to rip your own image files for personal use and need instructions on how to recreate what Flynn's bit did, you can always follow along on YouTube. It'll only take you about four, maybe five hours. Then again, some countries have copyright law so draconian that even making an image file of content you own legally is illegal. Hooray! But back to the collection. The other problem with enormous zip archives is they're a pain to install. So you'll need at least 75 gigabytes of free space on your main drive to enable extraction. Unless you can find a way to specify an alternative drive for the temporary file location. Having done that, you need to transfer the archive to the appropriate folder in your Mr. Storage and then boot up the machine by mounting the correct images. The important thing to do then is to save the settings so that you don't have to mount the images each time you boot the core. This took me two hours to figure out because I am not a clever man. As for the updating of this collection, if you follow Flynn's directions, then you either have to SSH or hit F9 to get to the console of your mister, CD into the scripts directory with an elevated root account, type 2wget commands, alter the INI to the base path of your VHDs, and then run a script and hope for the best. Not exactly intuitive, especially if you're using an external USB source. It required all my technical ability just to get it working right, including some manual alteration of files off the SD via my own Linux distro. And it took an additional few hours to figure out. So if anything, this convoluted setup and requirement of a huge archive is even more painstaking than simply running DOSBox. Not to mention most likely constructing the machine by hand in the first place. It begs the question to be asked, why on earth would you bother? Because those hardware enthusiasts surrounded by their old machines were right. It's not nostalgia, and when you play on real hardware you can feel the difference in hundreds of little ways. And if you can't buy or painstakingly recover one of those beige boxes, then after actual x86 hardware, the mister is the next best thing. And much cheaper overall than trying to build and maintain a room full of old consoles and computers. Plus there's support for the MT32 Pi, which is neat, but I'll have more on that in a later video. It's not all roses though. You still have memory management to contend with, the Sound Blaster seems to be way too loud on certain games, and other games refuse to run entirely. It's not quite at the level of some of the more developed cores on Mister, which seem to run perfectly. But when comparing the AO486 core to the next best thing in DOSBox, keep in mind that one is a project in its infancy, barely a few years old, and the other has been in development for over 20 years now. The Mister project and its enthusiasts are like the Borg Collective, slowly assimilating better ways to use the DE10 Nano at the heart of their setups, improving each iteration and opening up new possibilities with their brilliant coding breakthroughs. A relentless march forward that has seen the system expand its capabilities all the way up to the PlayStation and latter day DOS titles, even to the point of installing Windows games. With only a few complex systems and the turn of the millennium's hardware requirements preventing them from covering every great old game ever made. So my hat's off to them, and I hope things continue at this incredible pace, if only to iron out the remaining issues of the AO486 core before it's compatible with every DOS game under the sun. There are obvious pros and cons with each core, but after spending decades emulating old titles on new hardware, I've been toying with the Mister for a mere few days, and I still have to concede that it's the greatest gaming machine I've ever used. And thanks to the efforts of Sorge League, Exo, Voljega and Flynnbit, who I'm probably all pronouncing wrong, and so many other members of the Mister community, 
I can use a simple menu to play a lifetime of DOS games and have most of them perform just like how I remember them being on my old PC. After decades of waiting, we have something on our hands here that improves on DOSBox without being native x86 hardware in order to do so. As for the future of the project, my Borg analogy seems apt. To paraphrase one of the developers, Alexei Melnikov, Mr. is community driven project. I prefer to focus on developing. I'm one. Users are many. Wise words. And it's those many users in the growing community that will continue bringing about the future of retro gaming. Which is what Mr. undoubtedly is.